Hey, Drew. Petey, hey, babe. It's been such a stressful day at work. Oh, yeah? What's happened? We had so many investors coming into the office. Just a day of back-to-back -back presentations. I'm so glad to be out of there. It feels like I can finally breathe again. And it's the weekend. Time for some house hunting. Sure. I've got four viewings booked to departments on the Upper East Side. They all have so much potential and not too expensive for the location. Mortgage shouldn't be a problem with a new promotion coming up. Well, we need to talk a bit more about that, babe. What's there to talk about? We both agreed that it's time we move in together, and it's a buyer's market at the moment. Let's strike while the iron's hot. Of course I want to move in with you, but apartments on the Upper East Side? Haven't you given some thought to what my family are offering? Your family? The same family who never speak to me? The same family who act like I don't exist? Yeah, I've given some thought to what they're offering, and it sounds a lot like they want you to move into the suburbs and be closer to them. I don't think that's the worst idea in the world, do you? Well, it's not the worst idea in the world, no, but it's certainly close to the worst decision in the world. Petey, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a job. A very well-paid job. My job is situated in the city. I have to go into the office every day. I have no choice. Your family wants us to move into the suburbs so they can have their son close to them. I respect that. And I would be a lot more receptive to that idea if they treated me like a part of the family. But they don't. They don't like me, Petey. They never have. Heck, you even promised to propose to me. You've never proposed to me because you're afraid of how your family might react. Drew, my family are odd. I've told you a million times. It's not that they don't like you. It's that they never see you. I always suggest we go to visit them on the weekends, but your weekends are so precious. All you want to do is go for walks in the city and watch Netflix. I think it's more of a case of they think you don't like them. Some wires have been crossed. We can fix that. But we can't fix that I work in the city. You can work some days from home. That's not impossible. The city is only a couple of hours away. You could commute in when you need to be in the office. Come on, Drew. Think outside the box a bit. You're telling me to think outside the box? You want to move back to where you grew up and buy a house. That's not thinking outside the box, Petey. That's called regressing. My family wants to give us the money to buy a house, Drew. I don't think you realize what a privileged position that puts us in. And you want to completely disregard it out of hand. You don't even want to consider looking at houses outside of the city. Do I not get a say in where we live? Of course you do, Petey. I'm not trying to cut you out of the process at all, but you're not considering the situation you're putting me in. Yes, it's very generous of your family to offer to buy us a house, but it's not like they're just gifting us the money. It's under very specific conditions. They'll only give us the money if I agree to move to the suburbs. And that will mean either leaving my job or asking my job to change my position in the company. That's a big sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that you don't have to contemplate. You're a designer, Pete. You can work from anywhere. But there's nothing for me in the city, Drew. I feel so detached from New York. I don't have many friends here. I'm only still here for you. You know how much my family means to me, and I rarely get to see them these days because you don't feel comfortable around them. I feel like we're going around in circles here. I've already made it crystal clear to you. And if you're too dumb or short-sighted to see that your family constantly give me the cold shoulder, then I don't know how I'm going to change your mind. I acknowledge that my family have been difficult, but they're protective of me. You have to understand that my family dynamic is very different to yours. What do you mean? You moved across the country to work in New York. I'm not saying that you don't love your family, but you have more of a detached relationship with them. My family is Italian. We come from a long-standing tradition of family over everything. Oh, I get it now. I'm an outsider. That's why your family doesn't like me. They're not that old-fashioned. You don't have to be Italian for them to accept you as my partner. But I do have to accept that we'll live within a mile's radius of them for the rest of our lives. No... I think we are going around in circles now. This is our first home, Drew. We have the chance to own a house without borrowing any money. And in a few years' time, if you want to move back to the city, then we can. I'm just asking you to consider their offer. Okay, I'll consider it, but I'm only considering it, Petey. I still want to look around those apartments on the weekend, and I want you to not sulk when we do it. Promise me that. Okay, I promise. Hey, Drew. Vera. That's me, your boyfriend's sister. Surprised to hear from me? A little bit, sure, but a nice surprise. It's a nice surprise for me, too. What do you mean? 
Well, we're going to be neighbors soon, so I thought I'd be the first to welcome you to the neighborhood. Welcome me to the neighborhood? Yeah, it takes some getting used to at first. The suburbs are a fair deal quieter than city life, but I love it. I've never been one for the hustle and bustle of city life anyway. Everyone in the neighborhood is so excited that you and Petey are moving here. Vera, Petey and I, we haven't exactly agreed to move to the suburbs. And even if we do, we're not necessarily going to live in your neighborhood. But I don't understand. You've bought the house across the road from us. No, no, we haven't, actually. We're looking at apartments in the city at the moment, and we're only looking. We've been to maybe six viewings in total, and they've all been in the city. I saw Petey only a few days ago. He told me he'd placed an offer on the house across the road, and it had been accepted. It's an adorable property. It really is. I must say I was quite jealous when he told me that he'd had an offer accepted. This is all news to me. I'm pretty sure Petey would have told me if he'd put an offer on a house. We're supposed to be moving in together, after all. But Petey told me it was your idea. He said it was your dream to move to the suburbs. I have a job in the city. It's my dream to remain in this job, at least for the next couple of years. Drew, honey, jobs come and go. You do realize this house is being paid for. You won't have to spend a dime on it. No mortgage, nothing. It's completely renovated. You can move in tomorrow. Most people would give their left arm to be in your position. They would, but I'm not most people. I'm based in the city right now. And I have no plans on changing that anytime soon. But do you love my brother? Yes. Who said anything about me not loving Petey? My brother wants to move to the suburbs. So much so that he's placed an offer on a house so he can be closer to his family. Do you not want my brother to be happy? Of course I want him to be happy, but he's not miserable in New York. Drew, with all due respect, wake up. Of course he's unhappy in New York. Do you really think he would have gone to the lengths of buying a house in the suburbs if he loved life in the city? Of course not. But he'd tell me if he was unhappy. Would he? I know my brother, and he's not one to talk about his feelings a lot of the time. I can't believe he would go behind my back like that. I mean, you're not married to him, Drew. He can do whatever he wants with his family's money. He can buy a house if he wants to. He doesn't need your permission. Well, he kind of does if he wants me to live with him. Well... Maybe he doesn't. What? Of course he does. It's all he ever talks about. Well, all he ever talks about to me is how much he hates the city. He only tells me how depressed he is living in New York. I think if you really love my brother, then you'd be able to read the signs, Drew. I love your brother. I spend almost every day with your brother. We talk about our future together. I don't need you to make assumptions about our lives. If Petey is unhappy, he would tell me. I think you're making this all up. You're making it up to make my mind up for me. It's an intimidation tactic and it won't work. I'm not trying to intimidate you, Drew. I was actually reaching out because I feel like we've barely exchanged two words since you've started dating my brother. I wanted to reach out because I thought we could be friends. But you've been so hostile towards me that I was stupid to even think that. Hostile towards you? You and your family have only ever been hostile towards me. You've always been cold. You've always thought I haven't been worthy of being Petey's boyfriend. You're paranoid, Drew. We never see you. Petey is always desperate for you to come and visit us, but you're always busy. And I've literally just reached out to you in the nicest possible way. But anyway, I don't want to fall out with you. I think you need to talk things over with Petey. I think I do too. Petey? Drew? Your sister just messaged me. Vera? Andrea? Vera. What did she say? She said a lot, Petey. She said an awful lot. Which was? She welcomed me to the neighborhood. She said you'd put down an offer on a house across the road from hers. Is this true? She jumped the gun a bit. What do you mean she's jumped the gun? I mean, it was supposed to be a surprise. A surprise? Yeah, you can say that again. It sure was a surprise and not a very nice one. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? We were looking at apartments in the city, Petey. Didn't I make myself clear? I don't want to move to the suburbs. I have a job in the city and I want to stay in the city. Come on, Drew. We were getting bought a house. I was getting bought a house. And the conditions were that the house had to be in the suburbs. It was a non-negotiable stipulation. For you. You didn't even include me in the decision. You just went ahead and put in an offer without even consulting with me. I just thought there was no way of persuading you. I thought the best way of persuading you was buying the house and showing you myself. 
That is definitely not the best way of persuading me. You should have included me, Petey. Were you including me? Were you even thinking about what I wanted? No! All you were thinking about was your job. You haven't even asked me why I want to move back to the suburbs so much. Okay, why? Because I miss my family. I love my family. I want to be around them. My friends all live outside the city. I'm lonely and depressed living in New York. I can't stand it here anymore. You haven't seemed miserable to me. It's because you're so wrapped up in your job and your own life that you haven't stopped to ask me. Do you really think moving closer to your family is going to solve all your problems? No, Petey, because you might be happy, but I won't be. I know I'll be miserable living there. No, you don't. How can you know that if you haven't tried it? You just think you will be. There's a big difference. I know I'm miserable in the city because I'm living in the city and I know I'm miserable. But it's not like you've even tried to be happy here. You don't leave your apartment. How did we meet, Drew? At a bar? Exactly. I do leave my apartment. It's just that I feel like I have no connection to this place. I don't feel like it's home. And a new apartment isn't going to change that. So what you're saying is nothing will change your opinion about New York? That's right. Not even me? If you're miserable in New York, that means you're miserable with me. That's not what I'm saying. Haven't you been listening to me? I want you to move to the suburbs with me. But I'm not going to do that, Petey, so I guess you're going to have to make a decision. Either it's the city and me, or it's the suburbs and your family. I'm not going to force your hand. I'm pretty sure you've made up your mind already. I can't believe you're making me choose between you and my family. I can't believe you're making me choose between your family and my job. I guess we're not ever going to meet in the middle with this. How can we meet in the middle, Petey? We made a decision that we want to move in together, and now we're on the brink of breaking up. How could it get to this point? You should have told me how you were feeling before we started looking at apartments. I guess I was scared. Scared of what? Scared of this. I was scared of losing you. I thought I could convince you. I really did, but now I know. Know what? That your job means more to you than me. And your family means more to you than me. A job isn't the same as a family. Is it not? You don't get to decide that. I guess there's no way of convincing you. I don't think there is. Is this over? It breaks my heart, but I think it is. I can't believe we're breaking up over text! Me neither. I'm, I'm sorry this happened. I'm sorry too. I guess I'll see you around, Drew. I guess so. I really hope you reach a point where you can value things more than a career. And when that day comes, then don't hesitate to reach out. You'll always be special to me, Drew. My breakup with Petey was hard to take. I felt terrible that I hadn't noticed how miserable he had been living in the city. We reconnected a couple of months later and we're now in a long distance relationship. He lives in the suburbs and I live in the city. I visit him every other week and have grown really fond of his family. Maybe, in a few years, I'll think about moving in with him, but I need to take life at my own pace. For now.